As promised, we are about to do a deep dive into TechSmith's uh, Camtasia 2020 new feature, which is track maps. My name is Naomi Skarsinski with the Top Shelf VA channel, your place for creativity and inspiration for business and life. Let's do a quick review of the track map features. If you had watched my previous video, what's new in Camtasia 2020, the first couple of minutes of this probably will be a little bit of a review for you before we get into the very deep, deep dive. Uh, be sure to stay all the way to the end because at the end, I'm going to have a bonus training on how you can stack all of these track mats on top of each other to create really unique, different uh, effects. So let's go ahead and dive in now. The track map feature allows any image, graphic, video, call out, text, or any shape to create a transparency to a track directly underneath it. There are a couple rules to understand here. Rule one, the track map affects the tracks directly below it. Rule two, if there's no visible track directly beneath the track map, then the track mat renders as a normal track. Let's look at the first example. On track one, we have a video clip I downloaded from TechSmith's Camtasia library. On track two, we have the text Top Shelf VA. To turn this track into a track mat, we right click on the eye and get a drop down of four choices of alpha, alpha inverted, luminosity, and luminosity inverted. Let's start with the alpha selection. An alpha track affects the media on the tracks directly below it as invisible through the transparent pixels, but visible through the opaque pixels on the track. As you can see, when I click on alpha, the text in this case creates a mask or mat of the video. So the video appears only where the text is, which is opaque. The area around the text was transparent, so the video became invisible in those areas. You can tell a track has been matted by the red chevron on the left here in the texture track. The track the mat has affected is directly below it and has a purple bar on the left. Notice what happens if I put another video on track one, but we don't have anything on the track mat above it. It's a blank canvas because of rule one. The track mat affects the tracks directly below it. If we were to add a track below this and move the video onto that track, then it becomes visible. This is because of rule two. If there is no visible track directly beneath the track mat, the track mat renders as a normal track. Now you can do anything you want to an object on the track mat. For example, you can add animations and behaviors, and Camtasia will keep them when you have the track mat turned on. Let's look at an often used asset that we can create with track mat, which is the circular mat. On the first track, I have my Camtasia screen capture video. The second track, I have my talking head video. And on the third track is my circle annotation. I'll turn the third track into an alpha track mat. I'll then resize my track two talking head video to fit into the circle using the corner bounding anchors. I'll also hold down my alt key and crop the video so it matches the size of the circle, then group these together. Okay, what do you think happened here? Remember, because the group saved directly below the track mat, and there no longer is an opaque object on that track, everything becomes invisible through the transparent pixels. So let's remove the track mat. Okay, why is the mat still working? Whenever you group a track mat, the mat stays with the group. The only issue is if you ungroup, you lose the mat feature. But no worries, all you need to do is reset the track as a mat. I will make the circle track an alpha track mat again and group all of this together. I'll then set the empty track mat to none. I'll also add a border to this circle with the sketch motion callout. I'll make it as thick as it will go, which is 18, and the draw time will be zero. 
I'll adjust it so it fits on the outside of the circle, and I'll add a drop shadow to the circle. Let's move this group to the bottom right corner. Okay, now let's move on to the alpha inverted selection. All this is is the opposite of the alpha selection. An alpha inverted track affects the media on the track below it as visible through the transparent pixels, but invisible through the opaque pixels on the track. Here we have three tracks. The first track is a video with rainbow style bars I downloaded from TechSmith's Camtasia library. The second track is the city view video from our previous example. The third track is the text Top Shelf VA. When I click on the eye for the third track and select Alpha Inverted, the rainbow style bars appear where the text is. The media below the track mat, which is the city, is visible through the transparent pixels, the pixels around the text. The text itself is opaque, so the media below the track mat, the city video, becomes invisible in the text area. Since it is invisible, the rainbow style bars show through where the text is. So here's a question. How could we use the alpha inverted selection on the track map? We could use it as a transition. Right now on the first track, I have a Photoshop screenshot, or it could have easily been a screen recording video. The second track, I have the city streets video. The third track, I have the circle. I'll first scale the circle all the way down. I'll then move my playhead out to the right and add an animation key by pressing Shift plus A. I'll now expand the circle to completely cover the canvas by increasing the scale to 500%. Then using the bounding box corners, holding my Shift key down to keep the circle's ratio, drag it out beyond the canvas, making sure the full canvas is covered by the circle. I'll make sure it's centered. Let me put this view back to fit to canvas. Now I will right click on the track 3 eye and select Alpha Inverted. Now let's watch how this looks. I can move the animation key in or out if I want it to be faster or slower. I want it a little faster, so I'll move it in. Speaking of transitions, we can use videos that were rendered with an alpha channel as transitions. For example, I went to my TechSmith Assets for Camtasia Library account and downloaded the spherical circle opening. With video assets that are rendered with an alpha channel, anything that is black is the transparent part of the video. Anything that is white or has color is the opaque part of the video. There are a couple ways you can set this up as a transition. First, I'll move this video up and over to the second track, approximately one second over. I'll move the playhead to the beginning of the video on track one, and then right click on the spherical circle opening and add it to the timeline at playhead. I prefer my standard transitions being a second or less, so I will add a clip speed to the alpha video and slide the video below it to the left to align with each other. I'll then right click on the eye and select alpha. Now this method is fine if you are working with only a couple transitions and have a short video and you're possibly only going to have one track mat level. However, if you're like me and you have large projects that use a large amount of transitions, this method could add a ton of tracks and make things very complicated. This is what I do instead. Let's undo everything and start again. I'll put the playhead at the start of the second video for the transition. Add the spherical circle opening to the timeline at playhead. Add the clip speed and decrease to one second. Then I'll move this over to the left until it lines up to the end of the first video. Place my playhead at the beginning and split the first video by pressing the letter S. I'll select both and move these up and over the second video, then ripple everything over to the left by holding my shift key down as I move the playhead to the left. I'll place my playhead at the end of the transition and split the second video. I then right click on the track 3 eye and select Alpha. I'll group all of the transition section tracks together and change track 3 back to none. We're now back to one track and I can continue editing. Let's take a look. 
For me, this makes projects with the numerous track map transitions a lot cleaner and easier to work with with the split and group method. So let's go ahead and move on to learning about luminosity track mats. Luminosity refers to the media's brightness, trending towards white or trending towards black, and determines the level of pixel visibility and transparency between tracks. With luminosity, the maximum brightness, which is white, is 100% visible, and the minimum brightness, which is black, is 100% invisible. Let's look at another transition using luminosity. I downloaded this track map black ink transition video once again from the TechSmith assets for Camtasia library. I'll move the playhead to the second video and add the transition video to the timeline. Now let's look at this for a second. Well, one, it's way too long for what I want, and two, I only want the first part where it turns all black. So I'll scrub the playhead to the end of the section I want and split the clip there. I'll add the clip speed and make it just slightly longer than a second long. Move this to the left and split the first video. Select both and move them over the second video and ripple all to the left. I'll split the second video. Now I want to show you something quickly. What if I selected alpha for this track map? Why isn't the transition showing? The reason is because this video clip was not rendered with an alpha channel with the black area showing as the transparent part of the video. Both the black and white sections are completely opaque. This is why we will select luminosity when we set this track map. I'll group this together and remove the empty track map by setting it to none. Let's take a look. Okay, let's move on to luminosity inverted. Remember, luminosity refers to the media's brightness, trending towards white or trending towards black, and determines the level of pixel visibility and transparency between tracks. With luminosity inverted, the maximum brightness, which is white, is 100% invisible, and the minimum brightness, which is black, is 100% visible. I'll now turn track 3 into a track matte luminosity inverted. Move my playhead to the end of the transition, split the two video assets, group the transition tracks, remove the now blank track mat, remove the unused portion of the video on track one, which is no longer part of the transition, move this video down to track one. Done. Let's take a look. Okay, one more before we move on to the bonus training on how we can stack all of these track mats together to get really unique looks. Let's look, quickly look at what it looks like when we put a video over another video media as a track map. Our canvas color is black. On the first track, we have the City Streets video. On the second track, we have the Rainbow Bars video. Remember, luminosity refers to the media's brightness, trending towards white or trending towards black, and determines the level of pixel visibility and transparency between tracks. Let's see what this would look like if we set it as a luminosity track map. Now, since the canvas is black, that is the color coming through the luminosity transparency percentages. Let's quickly look at luminosity inverted. That's an interesting effect, and so much more can be done by adding other Camtasia tools to the tracks, which we are about to review in our next bonus training. So let's go ahead and take a quick look at what we're going to be creating in the bonus training. Let's see what we have on our tracks for the basic layout. Then we will see how each track was built up. The first track, I have a rectangle shape that is the base color for this section of my video. I could also simply change my canvas color if the full video was going to have this color background. The second track is my header group. The third track is the circle group. And the fourth track is the text box group. One thing to note here, when setting this up, I had everything in their original media format. I set my track mats and grouped what needed to be grouped then went back into the group and added Camtasia tools, made my adjustments based on the overall look and effect I was going for. 
For time purposes, I'm going to simply show you the actual settings of each of the Camtasia tools. So let's start with the header group. We'll ungroup it. Track two, we have a motion background video I downloaded from the TechSmith assets for Camtasia library. I added a color adjustment of brightness five, contrast zero, and saturation minus 42. This motion background clip was much larger, so I split the clip rather short and added the clip speed tool at 0 0.20 times in speed to slow the motion down. Track three, we have the text. I changed it from the white text to a color of EDD5B5. We'll make track three in alpha track. We'll group these two tracks together and remove the track mat above it. I'll add the slide right transition to this group. Let me go ahead and remove the empty tracks and move on to the video circle group. I'll ungroup it to see what we have. We have another group here and we can see that I have three stacked track mats when we expand this. I'm going to hide these tracks for now to make it easy to focus. Okay, on track three, we have the city video. I went in and added the color tint tool with the light tone at A28A04 and the dark tone at 4D2D03. On track four, we have the rainbow bars video. I added a color adjustment to it with brightness at 13, contrast at negative 22, and saturation at minus two. I made this track a luminosity track. Track five is the black ink transition, which I had scrubbed and split to the first section of all black and added a clip speed to make it 2.27 times the speed. I made this a track mat luminosity inverted. Track six is a circle annotation at the size I wanted the video to be shown. I made this track mat in alpha track. Track seven is the circle sketch motion annotation adjusted to the circle shape with the color set to D1A368. The thickness at 18 and draw time as one second. I then grouped all those tracks together and removed all empty tracks. I still wanted to add a little bit more of an adjustment to this group. So I added a color adjustment with the brightness at eight, contrast at 25, in the saturation at negative 45. Let's move on to the text block group. I'll ungroup it and ungroup all inside groups. I'll hide all tracks again so it's easy for you to focus until we work with them. Track four is my title track for the block of text that will appear underneath it. I set the color for that at F1D5C5. Track five is the list of activities to do in the city. I set the color for that at the same F1DFC5. You'll notice I used the vertical spacing feature set at 0.35 to space out the lines evenly. Tracks 6 through 10 are triangle annotations that I sized and adjusted to use as a bullet. I simply copied the first triangle and pasted it on each subsequent track, lining it up with the center of the next track's text. Track 11 is a rectangular annotation I sized to cover everything. I then added animation keys at one second each as I moved the top of the box down by pressing my Alt key down and cropping the box. I grouped all the bullets together, then grouped the bullets and the text together, removed all the empty tracks. I now made track five an alpha inverted track. It would also work if I made it a luminosity inverted track. I then grouped track four and five together and removed the track mat from track five. Let's look at it again. As you can see, with the track mat feature in Camtasia 2020, you are limited only by your imagination. There are a ton of fantastic new features in TechSmith's new Camtasia 2020. If you haven't had the chance to watch my What's new in Camtasia 2020 video, make sure to go ahead and watch it. Either on this side or that side, make sure to click on it and watch it. If you haven't already done so, go ahead and subscribe and hit that notification bell. Until we meet again, have a wonderful day.